Hey everybody, a video here for you today, and we are going to go down to South Florida, to Miami, and this is a great one for the Ancient America series because this is very unique and strange and a mystery, and I'm also going to show you something that I'm a little confused about, but we are going down to Miami. Now, if there was going to be ancient ruins here, where would you expect them to be? And I know some of you have heard this story here. Yes, it's right at the mouth of the river here. Now, this story I was pretty fascinated by, and here you can see, down by the mouth of the river here, there is a circle out in this park, and the story of the Miami Circle, as it is called, is a unique one, and it really goes back to 1998. And this is the story of the Miami Circle and how it was found. 1998, a developer bought this property, and he wanted to build these large apartments here. Or condos. This was considered an archaeologically sensitive area so they had to do some uh, snooping around to see if there was anything of any archaeological significance here. And when they dug down they were shocked. This is what they found. Carved down into the limestone they found these holes, irregular shaped holes, and there is a theory on what these represent actually but this is and this stunned archaeologists this is an absolutely perfect circle and it's carved it's bored down into the limestone and you can see the limestone hacked away here an actual uh, a lane or a pathway carved into the limestone going this way and then this way and this seems to be on an east-west axis pretty much that's the way it appears to me was this a sun temple? But who the heck carved this? And I'm going to be talking about this right here. You might be wondering what the heck this is. Well, this is a septic tank. And there was an apartment over this in the 1950s. And when they did some research into it, um, at first people were wondering, is this circle somehow related just to the installation of the septic tank? But that was proved to be not true. But what they did is they looked at the calcite deposits where this stone was cut out in the 1950s and then compared it to these holes that were bored in the limestone that formed this perfect circle in the calcite deposits. When you cut away stone, water kind of comes up through the limestone and it forms like a crust. And they can tell by the crust how old these holes were bored in the limestone. And these were obviously very ancient and this was obviously very modern. So they knew that this septic tank had nothing to do with the construction of the circle. And I'll talk a little bit uh, about where this overflow from the septic tank actually went. But the magnitude of what was found here and the mysteriousness of it and people's curiosity, well, they wanted the site preserved. They didn't want buildings going up right on top of what was obviously a sacred site, maybe many thousands of years old. Nobody really knew. Nobody had answers, a lot of guesses. So the public rallied and there was protests and some of them got a little nasty, I guess, but this site was ended up being purchased uh, in accordance with the city, $27 million. They preserved the site and then kind of uh, erected a little memorial to the stone circle even though you can't see the stone circle and all the stuff carved into the limestone right below the grass here. And it's everywhere here. There was a settlement on the point here next to the Miami River in ancient times. Now, here is a shot from 1999. So this is right after this was discovered and everything was kind of opened up here. And you can see other ruins under the present day grass here, what is now covering it. But here is the hazy image of when this was opened up from 1999. Now, if we move ahead here, this is 2003, and you can see different areas being excavated here, but here is that main circle, which archaeologists described as a perfect circle. But this is what it looks like today on Google Earth. The shadows are kind of uh, making it a little dark down here, but this is what the circle is all about today. A lot of the ruins obviously are right under this whole area as I showed you on that historical imagery. 
here are the ruins just partially exposed when they were doing the research here. You can see their flags in different areas here. And here is part of the circle, and it looks like there is an alleyway carved in the circle coming out of it here. Does that align with some? Well, this looks like it is going straight across on an east-west axis. But let's go down and take a look at it on Google Street View. Obviously, today, well, a little bit different than when this stone circle was carved in the limestone here. But here you can see today what it looks like. Brickles Point, I believe that is the name of it. But right down here is where they found that stone circle. But this place today, obviously maybe 2,000 years ago, or maybe a lot earlier when this stone circle was drilled into the limestone here, out on this point today. I don't know if anybody really knows the true history down here, but it is mysterious, and there is just speculation on it. I will leave some links below, but I just want to read a little. It says, in 1998, archaeologists discovered a perfect circle measuring 38 feet in diameter with 24 irregular cut basins ranging in size from 1 to 3 feet located on the water's edge in downtown Miami, Florida. Some experts believe the basins depict the images of sea turtles, dolphins, sharks, manatees, shrimp, and other marine animals. Robert Carr, an archaeologist and director of the Miami-Dade Preservation Division, was quoted as saying, It's like looking into a distant hazy mirror. We've discovered something substantial. Discovered at the mouth of the Miami River and what could be signs of an ancient culture, archaeologists say the perfect circle is centuries old. The formation still seems sacred because of its apparent function as a temple or astronomical device. The structure has 41 potholes on each side of the circle along the east-west axis. It measures the precise outlines of the autumnal equinox, the time when the sun crosses the equator, making day and night equal in duration, and the summer and winter solstices. The northern and southern extremes of the sun's seasonal travel through the sky. This is Access Genealogy. I will leave some links below. But here is one theory they Theorize that these post holes that were bored into the solid limestone, and this is the only place in the ancient United States where an ancient culture was digging, carving out limestone to create a structure or a temple. And this is one theory. They held up a structure like this. And at other ancient sites that we have looked at where there is holes dug, post holes dug, they seem to be in a uniform pattern, outline the out outline of the structure. And there are so many post holes dug here carved into the limestone that were some of them holding up huts did some have other meanings and then we have that perfect circle and when this place was first uncovered there was reports of eight circles but i can't really verify that or exactly what those initial news reports were talking about now the dating of it has it between 1700 and 2000 years old it says this estimate is based on radiocarbon dating of decomposed wood particles found inside several of the holes now that dates wooden poles that were put into these holes carved into the limestone wood rots in humid weather they probably had to do this many times if that's exactly what they were doing holding up some sort of structure with these holes so there is a lot of questions and that certainly does not date the time that these holes were bored in the limestone that just indicates the date that the latest timber was put in there probably now since there is some sort of alignment built in with other post holes dug on the east-west axis i ask this question were there poles sunk in these holes as kind of a sun temple like the Woodhenge at Cahokia. And just as the Calusa tribe from Fort Myers in my last video that I did really late last night, well, these people might have been astronomers also who were here. The most logical explanation seems to be this was carved around 2,000 years ago. Is this much more ancient? Well, I think there's a slight possibility, but was this a sun temple? And this is very unique. Now, one theory is the Olmecs and the Mayans were up here, and here is a diagram of what was found here. And there is a theory here based on these post holes on the far end. 
and this is a perfect east-west line that there was alignments built in this but here you see these holes were dug and they are of weird shapes they're not just round holes some say they look like fish sharks whales and other sea life they found a five foot shark they found walrus teeth they found tools made out of shells they found a spear weapon made out of a stingray tail or stinger so these people were directly connected to the aquatic life nearby in the ocean Carr said he believes the circle is of Tequesta Indian origin the site itself possibly a former Tequesta settlement and that it may have been inhabited continuously for 2,000 years and is the Tequesta people is that the fairly modern name that we associate with these people who inhabited the area and is that what they were called 2,000 years ago that's what I wonder about it says John Reese Sack the Diggs field director said the local archaeologists believe the circle to be 500 to 800 years old because of a specific type of pottery found nearby well there was carbon dating done on charcoal here found in fire pits that were 2,000 years old so we know people were here and making fires 2,000 years ago and I think this was always a sacred site you can't date a site based on charcoal because that only proves that there was people making fires here at that point it has nothing to do with when this place was originally built now there was two primitive stone axes that had never been used so they were in pristine condition and they were left here as like an offering it says detective work has solved the mystery of two primitive stone axes unearthed at the Miami Circle the palm sized tools were produced hundreds of years ago by people who live 530 miles away in central Georgia and I believe uh, the location of the stone was determined it came from a site near Macon Georgia the discovery by the University of Miami geologist provides compelling new evidence that the ancient South Floridians including those who carved the stone circle or later occupied the site maintain robust trade and cultural links with distant tribes now here's a pic when they were finalizing this little park out here and you can see the circle but most of the ruins are covered over here there is hundreds of post holes or some sort of holes carved for some reason there is one theory that it's actually a star chart all the holes within the big circle here but there is evidence of an ancient culture here and still a mystery uh, one theory is that these post holes supported some sort of structure and they were like stilt supporting it above the ground because of flooding and because this place is prone to hurricanes well if you had a hurricane come through here I think the wind would destroy any structure built a few thousand years ago on stilts but to keep it away from flooding I don't dismiss that at all but the structure on stilt supported by these holes in the limestone that is just speculation it doesn't answer for the hundreds of post holes found all throughout this area here Tequesta lived on both sides of the river for as long as 2,500 years by 1763 they were gone rendered extinct by the European explorers and the diseases they carried now we have another physical material record of the people who were here before us that continuity that sense of place that is really important Carr said as his team dug out and marked new discoveries Tuesday including the jawbone of a dog found buried just outside the concentric circles was the dog the guardian of the concentric circles well of course I'm gonna bring that up he noted that the new circles are close to the original shoreline prime real estate he calls it and apparently helped form one of the many ancient house foundations that could be unearthed as exploration continues but the alignments built in these holes and other post holes nearby was there like an astronomical house actually built here were the Mayans and the Olmecs here was this built thousands of years before the Mayans and the Olmecs and then this place was just continued to be a sacred site I wonder about that also and where did the overflow from that septic tank put in in the 1950s where did the overflow go well it went right into the Miami River and then out into the Biscayne Bay untreated 
So, so I'm going to call this area right here shit delta, but backing up here, I want to show you a few things. And one thing that's really strange to me now here is Miami, the Bay Area. But going down here to Key Biscayne, this is a total mystery to me. Usually when I see things on Google Earth, I can come up with an explanation for them. Now this area has never been developed, as far as I know. Now there is something right underneath the canopy of mangroves and other island growth here. But you can just perfectly see the clear lines going across here. Some of them are going this way. As far as I know, there was nothing ever built here. What the heck is this? Is Are these ancient ruins just right sitting near Miami today? This is very strange to me. Is this why this area was never developed? Was there something here a long time ago that I just don't know about? But this place seems totally wild, never developed. And there seems to be what looks to me, if I was looking in the jungle, I would say there's ancient ruins here. What this is, well, that's an assignment for you people to figure out. I have no idea. This one line coming straight down here goes right out almost into the bay. And it keeps on going. You can see that line right here. And then it goes right up. Is this an ancient canal that the end of it is now submerged? I have no idea what this is out on Key Biscayne, but this place seems to be untouched and there seems to be something ancient and right underneath the canopy of growth here. Now here we are. We are perfectly aligned to north on Key Biscayne. What this is, I'm not really sure. I don't know if anything has ever been here in recent times, but I'm going to call this the Lost City of Miami until somebody comes up with a good explanation for me. But here is a close-up of what's underwater just off of Key Biscayne. Comes all the way up here. Continues right here. I have no idea what this is. I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation for it, but you people are going to have to provide it because I have places to go and people to see. That is mysterious to me. Probably a good explanation. I just can't come up with one goes out into the bay there but that is the story of the stone circle that is the lost city of Miami I'm gonna call it temporarily just because well I can say whatever I want <laughs> but I thought the Miami stone circle was one of the more fascinating things I've looked into in ancient America there seems to be a lot more carved into the limestone here that is right underneath the grass today. Ancient people were doing things here a long, long time ago in present day Miami. There is a mystery down here I want the answer to just because I'm curious and it's bugging me. But that's a history of Miami, the stone circle. Hope you thought that was interesting and you all have a very nice day.